At over 500,000 square feet and 85 years old, Union Terminal is a challenging building to restore. Prior to the start of construction in July 2016, engineers and architects spent 18 months performing thorough probes and analyses throughout the building to assess the extent of the work required. But as Union Terminal undergoes the first full structural restoration in over eight decades, crews knew the unexpected would pop up despite their initial exhaustive probes. After all, some crews are the first people to see some areas of the building since the original craftsman in 1933. In November 2017, crews discovered significant water damage to structural steel below the plaza where water had leaked through two expansion joints over the decades. The initial issue was discovered as crews removed concrete from steel girders in the ceiling of the mezzanine level, revealing more extensive damage to the steel than expected. We found that you know, over the last 80 years, uh, with water infiltration and a lot of uh, corrosion, that some structural members were needing repair and enough so that when we made the calls to structural engineers to review, it was determined that we had to shore up the structure to ensure that while we were working on things and making repairs, we didn't do anything to the structure that would cause it to move or shift and create an issue for the teams. So the first thing that occurred was a visual survey was taking place and we realized that we had some advanced corrosion in some of these areas. We immediately followed that up with the ultrasonic testing by a third party to understand the extent of the corrosion on the various beams and the main girders. That was followed by a deep dive into the existing drawings and a structural analysis to understand, based on that level of corrosion, what could be repaired and what made more sense to replace. Finding an issue like this is not uncommon on historical buildings. THP's done many projects where you're getting in and you can't fully look at the building because it was occupied. Removal of walls, looking at hidden conditions. I think the complexity here was to some of the loads since it is the plaza structure. How do you reinforce the existing space and also not impacting the architectural layout, height, clearances, and making sure the space is usable. Steel beams of the size and shape required for this project are usually rolled only once or twice a year. So eight beams were custom ordered. As soon as the steel mill finished rolling the beams, they went straight onto a truck to be delivered directly to the job site. The custom beams were on site within six weeks of the discovery of the issue. Our biggest challenge in this process necessarily wasn't getting the beams in their final resting place, but it was how to get them to their final resting place. And maneuvering 40 foot pieces of steel that are three feet tall that weigh 16,000 pounds into the center of an existing facility that's basically underground was a challenge in amongst itself. Then finally it came down to a point where we found an area in the building that was just wide enough that we could feed the beams in and build a massive gantry system that would lift the beams into place, slide them onto what is the mezzanine level of the structure. Once the beams were on the mezzanine level, crews needed to figure out how to move them into place. So we went back to the drawing board and found out that the best option was to place air skates underneath the steel beams. Once we did that, you could basically push 16,000 pound beams around with your index finger. Crews skated the beams nearly 200 feet into the building to get them into position to be hoisted into place. A steel fabrication shop was set up on the mezzanine level, where steel workers welded stiffeners onto the beams and performed custom cuts as needed. With so many welders in action, a custom ventilation system was set up to exhaust fumes and bring in fresh air from outside the building. Once the beams were in position and modifications had been made, they were chain hoisted into place and integrated into the structure. Two of the beams, which would be located over the Woods exhibit in the Duke Energy Children's Museum, proved to be particularly challenging to get into place. We had an area where you could not just jack the beam up, chain hoist it into place. It had to be elevated and raised and then slid over about 40 to 50 feet so it could get to its proper column line. So we actually had to build a false structure and a false floor. We hoisted the beam into place, put it on air skates again, and then slid it over into place, put the columns underneath it, and then finally uh, loaded the beam with the structure above and got it into place. With the original damaged steel reinforced, crews are completing waterproofing measures on the plaza above to prevent future water penetration into the steel and spaces below. The leadership of Union Terminal probably said it best is we have to save the building and we have to make sure that it can last for at least another 80 to 100 years. It's been a very challenging project from the, just the mere size of the structure 
and the plaza area. Um, it's been very rewarding to be involved in the project to see the museum center here in Cincinnati be restored. A lot of us have taken our children and all through the museum and we come here often so to see that not only the museums will be back in place but the building itself to see that restored for future generations is a great thing. With the mezzanine steel repairs complete and the Duke Energy Children's Museum open once again, Union Terminal is another big step closer to completing its restoration and securing its future for generations to come.